All right, hey coaches, appreciate you tuning in my YouTube channel. Uh, this is day two of practice organization. If you'd like more information, you can reach out to me at FB Coach Simpson on uh, Twitter, find me on Facebook groups, or go to my website, uh, or you can email me, fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com. If you haven't already done so, you can also subscribe to this channel. I'll be trying to put out information, hopefully, uh, now that we're in off season, we'll be putting out uh, uh, daily videos throughout the week. So yesterday we talked about individual time with inside of practice organization. So usually as you're building a practice, you know, you're gonna get individual first, and then a lot of times you'll jump into group work, which is what I had done for multiple years. And then we kind of stumbled upon, hey, you know, we're kind of missing pieces in our practice schedule where certain groups need to work together, but these other kids are just standing there and watching. Okay, and, and same thing on offense and defense, you know, where you're, you've seen it before, you're coaching, and you're trying to tell these kids to knock it off and pay attention. The reality is they're not doing anything, so they're bored. And so you've got to really work hard to try to figure out, okay, how am I going to organize a practice where we're getting the most of what we're going to run, uh, where I've got kids not working skills they don't need or not doing anything. You know, we want kids constantly moving. So we came up with the idea of pods about two or three years ago and really have liked it. I think it applies to any offense. The examples I'm going to give now come from the gun tee, but it would apply if you ran whatever offense you might want to run. You just got to kind of think it through. So what we'll do is we'll do individual skills first, maybe 10, 15 minutes, depending on the time of the year. Then we go into pod work, and in our pod work, we're going to take several different groupings. Okay, so for us, you know, we're a heavy buck sweep team. A lot of people know that. We also run belly. Okay, and so a lot of times that involves our running backs and our guards. They're going to work together. So we will bring them together for maybe it's five minutes a day where they're going to work buck or they're going to work the belly uh, and they're going to work, you know, their pulls. We're going to give them aiming points. You know, we got pretty popular using the, what we call them the buck hurdles, which is the oversized hurdles. And so they'll work their tracks at guard. The running back is working following the guard and getting through. And then you can even add into this element as we move the RPO game. We'll bring the quarterback over there with him and we'll give him some type of read. And if there's time we're working our peak concept or spot concept, whatever you want to call it, we may bring the slot receiver over as well and work him too. So you kind of have these guys working together. Well, while they're doing that, usually our wing and our tight end are over there working whatever the play is that matches. So if we're working buck, our Y and our B are over there working down block and handling different flavors of down block. And a lot of times our strong tackle will be with them. So you have those three guys working the different looks we may see to run buck. Then you've got your uh, quick tackle over there. He may be working with a coach on cut blocks or scooping or whatever we're wanting to work with him. So you're maximizing the skill before you bring it together. Okay, And you can do the same thing on any play you might run. Okay. Uh, we also will put our guards, our Ys, our Bs, and our Ts in a pod together. Some days we want to work our counter game. So they'll all come together, and they're going to work, you know, the pull kick, the pull wrap with our Y. Uh, if you end up going to where you're pulling your strong tackle or running GT, this would be a time where you could work your pull wrap type guys with the running back on what you're looking at. Those tracks are going on. Well, the other guys are over there working down blocking because that kind of pairs with it. They're working that as you're doing all this together. And a lot of times our receivers at this point are working either an RPO or a block that maybe goes with these plays, okay? Uh, quick tackles and wide receivers. A lot of times we'll bring them together if we're working our screen game where they may be involved in it, okay? It may be where you want to run tunnel or you're wanting to run just a fast screen where you're pulling him out there. You know, you need to make sure he is getting individual work in spatial blocking. That's a very different block a lot of times than what he normally does. And so a lot of times you can put him with the receivers or the wings or whoever it is that might be able to help him a little more in that skill set. Uh, you can take your quick tackles or quick guards. A lot of times we're working like a slow screen or we're working maybe quick belly where you're trying to work the blocking scheme on how that's going to look. They need to work together. So we'll bring them together and our strong side will be working cuts or double, whatever they're working that may work with that. Okay. And then your Y and your B, I kind of mentioned it up here. They're going to work together a lot. Uh, they're not really the same position, but kind of are. So this basically is called what we call pod work. A lot of people are already doing it. They may just not name it that. You can do it on defense as well. You see a lot of times on defense where, you know, you're going to work the defensive line and the inside linebackers are together kind of as a group. 
but there might be a time when you want to bring maybe your strong safety into the box and he needs to work a skill the inside linebackers are working. Or you're going to take one of your outside linebackers, might be a nickelback, and he needs to go over there and work with the DBs on how to cover. And a lot of times as coaches, you know, we have an assigned position coach with that guy. Well, his skill set might not necessarily be what the kid needs. And so we're going to allow maybe our outside linebacker, they're going to communicate, outside linebacker coach and DB coach, but we're going to allow the DB coach to kind of take priority there because he's teaching a skill he may be way more comfortable with. Same thing here. You know, a lot of times if in a dream world for me, I have two offensive line coaches. So one coach will be handling our guards, spatial blocking, one is handling more kind of your traditional blocking. Now, it's not always the way it works because you guys know the coaching world, you kind of, you know, you take what you've got and, and you make it happen. But this is a way I have found to maximize your coach's skills and maximize your time on practice. So instead of doing group work here, jumping right ahead to inside drill where you got 50 kids doing nothing, you can now make sure every kid's getting a skill they need. It takes a little time to work. It takes a little time for your kids to get used to it. But once they do, it's definitely a time of practice when you can really fine tune skills that you need on both sides of the ball. So that's what we call pod work. If you want more information about specific drills you may run, feel free to reach out to me, fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com. Find me on Twitter or whatever you want to do, whatever your flavor of reaching out to people is. If you have a chance, I appreciate you to like this video and subscribe to it. I hope to put out three more this week talking about practice organization. Thank you.